our interest today is on multi-level model and uh, this is a case where you have your dependent variable as a multinomial in this case with uh, three categories and we use the BLMS library to be able to achieve that uh, so that we are able to do our computations very easily. We want to keep in mind that uh, whenever we are dealing with a multilevel, we want to have an understanding of what we call the random effects and the fixed effects in the model. Uh, that is the information that you you can extract from uh, whatever you are doing and it's very important to be able to to have that information uh, so that you are able to do your computations and so I'm going to select from my dear file that I was able to read .csv I'm going to have removed one of them which was a Greek, and the reason being is so that I have fewer uh, uh, categories. And therefore, I'm going to view the data that I'm going to use, labor, gender, income, and household size. Labor is the, the dependent variable, which is the, uh, the labor market outcomes. We can uh, view the DF2 uh, specifically to see how the data would look like. And uh, the labor has three categories, and I have gender with two, I have income and the household size. And if I do a summary of DF2, it can give us more information. I've done quite a bit of conversions here and there. So what we're going to see are the main variables that are coming out from uh, the columns that I have. So I have business, cash and employed, gender is male and female. Then I have the income and the household size uh, for the minimum being one and the maximum 23. And the amount is in Kenya shillings, so, uh, but uh, that's besides the point. The next thing now I want to do is because I'm interested in finding out how income varies based on gender, I'm going to create dummy variables uh, for, for this here, yeah, which is the cultural is the reference and female is the reference. And uh, if, if I do that, then I'll be able to create two more uh, columns uh, that I'll be using. One of them is on labor. Now I'm calling it labor C because the system will automatically pick that and also the gender. So if I was to view now the DF2, I'll be able to see my new two columns. They will not be visible uh, that uh, Casio is the reference, but the system automatically is able to do that. The same case with gender. So now I have labor and I have the labor C where I have made the Casio to be my uh, reference. Uh, as you do my analysis. So now the next thing is for me to use the BLM because I have three categories. I want to look at gender, I want to look at the household, and then I want to look at the log income and see how it varies uh, among the gender. Uh, then I'm using the DF2 data. I'll do quite a number of uh, iterations, the warm-ups, the algorithm is I'm using the mean field, the other algorithms, the cause of your computer, minus four, and I'm using categorical link. I've already learned these models, so what I'm basically going to do is to execute them. Uh, model one that I have here, uh, that gives me uh, what I'm interested in, and I'm going to see the output. We see how then do we make sense of this. That is something of importance to us, and this is where we are. Remember, we are looking at two things, gender and income. And there we go. Yes, there is female and there is male. 
the intercept and then there is uh, that is for business remember i'll be looking at business in reference to cash flow i'll also be looking at those who are employed in reference to those who are casually employed those who are formerly employed and so when i look at the two this is the female and this is the male this is the log value so what i would do here is i'll come down here and pick these two values this is 0 0.341 so it is exponential of 0 0.341 that is for uh, the first one which is the female and uh, then we also have the same case for the male why am i doing this because i want to to get the exponential value because these are the logs then 0 0.579 i'll do the same case for the men 0 0.579 and i find that uh comparing to the two uh, men are 1.78 times more likely and women are 1.41 times more likely be in business that means they earn more so men who are in business and women who are in business are more likely to earn higher incomes than the men or the women who are casual workers yes i do know that casual work is not in most cases well paid but those who are in business are more likely and there are other things you can look at to 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 see that we look at also those who are formerly employed and uh, those who are actually employed for the female who are formerly employed we are getting the value to be 1.307 uh so we want to look at those who are in formal employment so a woman who is in formal employment is 3.6 or 3.7 times let's say they are 3.7 they earn 3.7 times more than those who are in casual employment. And the same case, 1.117 for the men. We want to compare men who are in formal employment. They are 3.06 likely to earn. That is their income is 3.06 more than those who are casually employed. So definitely we can see both men and women. So if a woman gets a uh, formal employment compared to a casual, she'll earn more. She's likely to earn more than if a woman is in casual. But for men, it's three point. It's slightly lower. Uh, that helps us to see that if women get opportunities in formal employment than when they are given casual jobs, then they are likely to do better in terms of the, the income that they get. So this is a relationship between the two, which has been brought out by the model at this point. So this is what we are comparing. How income of men and women differ based on the labor market outcome, all the types of uh, employment they are involved in. Having said that, we also have what we call the fixed effects, and so we want to look at the fixed effects. And now the fixed effects will bring in the issue of gender, the fixed effects will bring in the issue of household size, because you can see in the model that we have been given here, uh, there is a household size. How does household size influence the labor market outcome? How does the gender influence that? So we'll go and look at those data, and the data is here. Uh, it's quite slightly more massive than the other one, uh, but we'll see if we could make sense of it. Uh, these are the, the, the analysis that we have. We are interested not in the standard deviations or correlations. We want to get interested with the regression coefficients. We have the intercept for business, intercept for those who are employed. You can see the intercepts are different in reference to uh, those who are in casual work. Remember, you need to get the exponential of this. There is the L minus 95 confidence interval and U minus 95. 
uh, some of these are significant. For example, men in business compared to those who are casual and also compared to the female, the value is negative 1.96. And since these two values, that is the 95 lower and 95 upper, the zero is not in between, then we see that the results are significant. This is also significant, but for employed and gender, it is not significant. Why? Because zero will lie between negative 0 0.23 and positive 0 0.03. So what does this tell us? Uh, for household size, yes, it has an influence on the issue of being employed compared to those who are casual. So let's look at the household, 0 0.02 and negative 0 0.11. We get the exponential value. That's the first one for those who are in business. And then we look at the exponential of negative 0 0.11. So what are we trying to do? We are trying to look at the effect of household size. For those who are in business, we are saying a person who is business uh, based on the household size, it's they are 1.02, uh, meaning they have a uh, a higher chance yeah? uh, for them to engage in business, business as the household size increases. But for informal employment, the bigger the household size, the lower the chance of being in formal employment. Uh, this value is less than one, that means there's a reduction in the likelihood of being in formal employment. Uh, the same case here when we look at the male and the, uh, the male in business, it is significant, yes, but what does this value tell us? Uh, it tells us negative 1.96. What is this basically saying is, first of all, you look at those who are in business compared to those who are in casual employment, uh, this one here, and then you compare the male and the female, uh, then you see that it is 0 0.14. What does that tell us? That the male, when you compare them to the female, they are less likely to be in business compared to be casually employed. Yes, the chances reduces for, for, for that interaction, to, for that to be there. And therefore, that is how you go about to estimate uh, the random and fixed effects for a multi level model whenever you have a multinomial dependent variable. Thank you so much for watching.